and welcome to Concept 2 Notes for my honor students. We have covered so far how to define acids and bases back in Concept 1, and now we're going to talk about how we describe acids and bases, and we do this both qualitatively and quantitatively. So first, let's look at how we can qualitatively define an acid or base. We can say that an acid or a base is weak or they are strong, and that strength is based on the degree to which an acid or base forms ions in water. This is very, very important, okay? So a strong acid or base is one that completely ionizes or dissociates in an aqueous solution. So a strong acid would totally ionize and a strong base would totally dissociate. What we see is that the more polar a substance is, the more it will dissociate or ionize and thus the stronger it would be considered. With a strong acid or base, we should see 100% ionization or dissociation. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Look at this graph. I think this is these two models here are really helpful to represent this. So remember, I gave you a general equation before of an acid. Acids typically have that hydrogen on one side. When we put them in water, we see that they ionize and we get that um, anion here with the negative charge and then the water takes in the hydrogen and we get our hydronium ion with a plus one charge. A strong acid would be incredibly polar, so much so that it fully ionizes into its two parts. Nothing is left over from a strong acid at the end. It's completely dissociated into the anion and then our hydronium ion here. Here's what it would look like, you know, you're looking at like a particle model or diagram at like a molecular level. Okay, so we have our acid with the hydrogen on it. When you remove that hydrogen, you would have the anion and then that hydrogen would go onto water and would get the O with the three hydrogens. Looking in here, notice we only see hydronium, we only see the anion here. There's no acid that we started with. This is showing that 100% ionization here. Because strong acids or bases, they're strong electrolytes. Remember, they completely make all of these ions here. And then here are a bunch of examples of those things. Okay, now, that's what a strong one looks like. Let's talk about weak now. First, let's talk about a weak acid. A weak acid is only going to release a few hydrogen ions in an aqueous solution. It's going to be somewhere under 100% ionization. It could be 80%, it could be 40%, it could be 10%. Anything less than 100 is going to be, you know, considered that weak acid. Okay, so we see that with acetic acid and some of these other things as well. So what we see in this picture, similar to what we saw before, but notice the difference. Now with the weak acid, we see some of the original acid here at the end because it didn't completely ionize. Now think about what would that graph look like that we did on the previous slide for a weak acid. If I was going to sketch a little graph to show a weak acid, what would that look like? Well. Because a weak acid doesn't completely dissociate, you should see some here. We would have an additional bar here. These would be a little lower, and then we'd have a bar here that represents some of the acid still present in the solution, okay? Now let's talk about a weak base. A weak base only releases a few hydroxide ions in an aqueous solution. It does not completely dissociate. We see that with ammonia, aluminum hydroxide, iron hydroxide, that kind of thing. So here's an example here. Remember this general equation for a base we kind of looked at? Remember this isn't like a perfect equation because technically water shouldn't even be there. It should be over the arrow. And then not all bases have the hydroxide in them like ammonia, but this gives us something to go off of, okay? What we would see is at the end of this with the base, there would be some of the base left over and then we still have some of the ions that form because it doesn't completely dissociate, so there's some left over. Now, think back to that diagram that I've shown you before, the particle diagram. What would that look like to represent a weak base? Take a minute, pause in your notes and try to sketch that to represent a weak base. And for this video, let's keep going. Let's talk then about now, we've talked about qualitatively describing acids and bases as weak versus strong, but now let's look at numerically. Let's look at quantitatively, and that's with pH and pOH. So first let's talk about pH, since this is what you're probably a little bit more familiar with. pH is a mathematical scale representing the concentration of hydronium ions on a scale of zero to 14. And you're gonna see in a second when we actually, I show you how to calculate this, it's a logarithm. And so it, it goes differently from what you would anticipate, okay? So the greater 
the hydronium ion concentration, the lower the pH. Okay, so looking at this scale of 0 to 14, neutral is 7. It's right in the middle here. Anything above 7 is basic or alkaline is another word used. Anything below 7 is acidic. Now, as we moved down the number of pH, that's increasing acidity. So a battery and stomach acid, which are 0 and 1 on the pH scale, have the highest hydronium ion concentration. They're much higher than, say, coffee, but they're you know, drain killer and bleach have the least hydronium ion concentration, okay? Because it's the inverse relationship here. As they go up the scale, we're increasing in basicity or increasing in alkalinity. And you may have done something like this before. If you're a lifeguard in the summers, you may have used chemical indicators. They show different colors to indicate different pHs, and you can use those to test the pool water and make sure it's the right pH for swimming in, okay? So that might be something you've done pH with before. Now, Looking at this, this is a way, I love this because this shows the log that I was saying before and how it's um, inverse. So this is showing pH, 0 to 14 scale. A pH of 0 has a hydronium ion concentration of 1. A pH of 1, it goes down to 10 to the negative 1, which is 0.1. A pH of 2 is 0 0.01. A pH of 3 is 0.001. pH of 4 is 0 0.0001. Okay, so it keeps going that way. That's what we see with this pH. It's different from pOH, which we're going to look at in a second. But let's look at how to calculate this, where these logs come from. So if you know pH, you can always calculate the hydronium ion concentration. If you know the concentration of hydronium ion, you can always calculate the pH. So pH is the negative log of the concentration of hydronium ion. And then the concentration of hydronium ion is 10 to the negative pH. So for example, let's say I said find the pH of a solution with a 0.01 molar hydronium ion concentration. Then identify it as acidic or basic. So my concentration is 0.01 molar. What's the pH? Well, if I'm looking for pH, I need this negative log equation. And then now I can plug in. I can plug in negative log of 0.01. And when you put that in your calculator, you should get 2. And a pH of 2, if we go back to our scale, is acidic. And so that's where that term acidic came from, if we're going to classify it. All right, now let's talk about pOH. So we're, I'm going to add on to my picture here with pOH. pOH is doing what pH does for hydronium ion concentration. is doing it for hydroxide ion. So pOH is a mathematical scale representing the concentration of hydroxide ions on that scale of 0 to 14. The greater the hydroxide ion concentration, the lower the pOH. Okay, so if you have a ton of hydroxide ions, you're going to have a pOH of 0 and a pH of 14. If you have no hydroxide ions, like very, very small, like 10.0 you know, 13 zeros, one, then you have a very low pOH, but you have a very high pH. Okay, so hopefully you'll see here a little pattern. pH plus pOH always equals 14.0, okay? So notice that neutral, it's a 7 pH, it's a 7 pOH. If we look at something really acidic, like a pH of 2, that has a pOH of 12. So they add up to 14 here. So as pH goes up, pOH goes down, and vice versa. All right, so we have similar calculations we can do with pOH. If you know pOH, you can always find the hydroxide ion concentration. If you know the hydroxide ion concentration, you can always find pOH. And if you know pOH, you can always find pH and vice versa. So we can always kind of move between these different variables. So pOH is equal to the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. And if you want to know the hydroxide ion concentration, you do 10 to the negative pOH. So let's say you have a problem here. Find the concentration of hydroxide ions in a solution with a pH of 8. Okay, so what do we know? We know a pH of 8. We want to know the hydroxide ion concentration. In order to know the hydroxide ion concentration, we're going to need to know the pOH. Well, we know that pH plus pOH is 14.0, so we can use that, and then we'll be able to use this equation. So first, pH plus pOH equals 14.0. So plug in your pH. 8 plus pOH will equal 14.0. So I actually need to subtract 8 from both sides, and then I get a pOH of 6. Now I can use this to find the hydroxide ion concentration. So hydroxide ion concentration equals 10 to the negative pOH. I can plug in the 6 there that we calculated. If I plug in my calculator, 10 carat negative 6, 
you should get a hydroxide ion concentration of 1.0 times 10 to the negative 6 molar. Okay, so that is how we can qualitatively and qua quali qualitatively and quantitatively um, describe acids and bases. So we're going to do a couple practices here. First, we'll just do some practice with labeling things as strong acid, weak acid, strong base, weak base. And then we'll also do some practice with pH and pOH calculations so you feel really solid with those.